exact e. Dacă nu se poate, da. o să vedem noi, o să dăm pe, pe niște linkuri oameni, în orice caz. Deci sunt gata să dau pe cameră, da? Da, ok. Deci putem să pornim înregistrarea, să fac eu o scurtă introducere. Ok. Go ahead, I'll switch on my camera. Ok, so our next uh, item in our program is called Entering and Exiting a, de a Designated Role in Cosplay with our guest Alexandru Georgescu, which also uh, hosted a really, a really great uh, crafting and cosplay contest uh, um, uh, yesterday. You may begin. Oh. Hello everybody, I hope you can hear me, I hope you can see me, and if not, I'm just going to tweak this around a bit, just going to the camera a bit upwards here. I'm currently supposed to be entering the role of Garrett Master Thief. This is an old game revamped back in 2014. Garrett is supposed to have like a short mechanical eye right over here. A apparently with, with magic, seeing a bunch of stuff. And he is the biggest, cynical, and most selfish, rogue, introvert person you would ever hear, which is, well, of course, opposite of me. And it was a challenge entering this specific role. We're speaking about entering and exiting a role designated in cosplay, and I'm going to, to tackle a bit of a they say this actually not one but more lines that we can uh, we can discuss about now because i'm going to discuss here about what people do when they perform in a specific cosplay competition what are the restraints and how you can overcome this for example let me give you the context you have cosplay which is costume playing. Um, it can be divided in more section for children, for teens and for adults. We all know about that. But we're going to focus on the general aspect of it, usually teens and, and people like us. And let's say between 15 to perhaps 30, 40 years. Why not? Generally speaking. Now, again, I'm going to do two points in this structure. You would have one, which is the simple, pleasurable way. I'm just dressing up, doing a bunch of photos, having fun with my friends, just like Halloween. And the second one, which is more sharper, going into cosplay competitions and trying to prove my worth, which implies me doing a costume and everybody else doing costumes based on accuracy, crafting, and then a bit of performing on stage. As you well know, there are com competitions that are divided in two sections. Again, some are focused on crafting 80% at least by your hand and 20% being the help of anybody else. And there are competitions which focus more on the performance, which is 40% um, the costume crafting and 60% the way you perform on stage, your act, your charisma to the people, um, the way you woo the, the judges. And yes, in cosplay competitions, just like in many other um, competitions you would probably know about, like uh, singing competitions, uh, got talent competitions and stuff, um, this is again based on specific costume crafting. You would think about people that are passionate about artsy stuff, um, people that go to university to, to um, let's say, construct backgrounds or perhaps movie props why not but also like you enter the role they're, so they're not only designated as a specific actor of course um for example let's say you have a big big question that you need to answer just before doing this which is going to to tackle the whys in your life why am i doing this why am i going on that stage why am i dressing up like this what is the message I want to go out and put to the people 
and what is the impact I want to I want to have? What is the thing I'm going to leave behind? Let's just say you have answered this question because later on we're going to have another uh, one or two um, bonus invites people and uh, we're going to discuss with those people how they see the basic steps about about entering and exiting a role but let's say you have answered this this primordial question and now you're facing your character what and i understand about performing and entering your role better is the first fact that you have acknowledged that you are not um the core and the most important part of the cosplay character but in fact the vessel the one guiding the image and the message towards the people because it's gonna be about them because i'm the kind of guy and you can agree with me you cannot but i'm the kind of guy that believes that the moment i'm dressed in a specific way and acting in a specific way it's not more about me it's about you guys it's about the public because those people out there will resonate with you and you will have to connect if you want to get the message across if you want that photo to, to shine or if you want the applause or anything else if you have answered your whys so to say so more or less you will think about accuracy um do i resemble this character um let's say garrett in this case the master thief has been wearing black and everything so i'm supposed to go on on black leather and see the shoe lines see the little details how it's being tied on on my body if it's loose or not um the accessories he has a compound bow which he can expand and then use the arrows and fling a shot um let's say let's see what are the other accessories maybe he has a dagger we were spoke we were speaking about daggers yesterday in the cosplay competition and one of them iconic is the simplest dagger that that garrett has because he's a thief and that in, in times he needs to defend himself he can he will not leave any trace behind right because that's what thieves do they, they just steal they, they they don't specifically kill and for that he'll need a blackjack there we go we have movement in this he's supposed to be sneaky he's supposed to be crafty he's supposed to be cunning he's supposed to stay in the shadows so what we have done here in this example is that we have taken a specific character and to make and perform his role we need to jot down at least three or four characteristics maybe perhaps we have them and that's good we can relate to that and perhaps maybe they can be taught if you don't have any more time and if if you don't uh, rehearse a lot about that if you don't like rehearsing and doing it and, and you're, you're just staying there, there as a model things will be seen your own persona will let's say inspire through the the other character and the more you want to enter the role you want to play the more your own self will slowly and subtly step out that's why again we're going to, to 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 discuss about if you're going to want to enter the role casually just for fun just for a bit of time maybe perhaps a minute or five minutes or half an hour or perhaps five hours or if you're going deeply like in method acting in which you act like that you you talk like that you walk like that you eat like that you react like that and for that again we're going back to the wise up in up in our heads and the moment you're trying to enter a specific character you have this bump this obstacle voices that we heard in our family in our society and in the examples we tried and didn't work out and the moment you're trying to do something and it, and it goes to a, to, 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 a, to a specific you know bummer you're starting to question yourself am i doing this properly why am I doing this? Oh, I'm just a failure and all that. You will need help. You will need to ask for help, be it your family, be it your um, dear ones, maybe friends. Uh, maybe you're going to find a director who can help you and you know make a choreography for you, especially for that, the way you behave and the body language and stuff, because you will say more with the body language, less 
with the words. Especially because, again, in context, here in cosplay, people that are cosplaying usually take costumes out, less focusing on voice acting and um, entering a specific, uh, a specific uh, acting behavior. But then again, they will focus on pose. For example, if I were to, to focus and start with something as a character for cosplay, I would go document my character, read everything about it, because I have already answered my question, why do I want to do that? Above, because I like it, just because like that. And I would put down on the piece of paper what I want to give the public or anybody else who sees me, for that matter. And I will start looking into details. And after the crafting, I will start with the poses. Because poses are something static. You're going to see them in pictures, you're going to see them in videos, you're going to see them on stage, everywhere else. So when the people are going to watch you from afar, they're going to say, oh, it's that character. Oh, it's him. If they don't recognize you, maybe perhaps you're going to feel offended. But then again, that could be a compliment because you have changed and shifted so much that they didn't even recognize you. For example, basic pose you're going to see for Garrett Thief is usually when he has the hood on, just like this. I mean, with the eye, the big hand reaching towards you, reaching to steal, reaching to take everything in your life because he can. Another specific pose is when he has the background of, of the city in the back creeping around uh, the rooftops and gen just generally going like this. And it's always in his front, always eager to, to feel all the traps and all the, contraps and all the contraptions, all the locks in, in front of him and so on. If you were to cosplay a specific a, not a specific hero, uh, let's say a Marvel hero, let's say perhaps a massive multiplayer online hero, and you see a heroic pose, you will immediately need to get your shoulders back, rest up high, and you know wear a weapon, and on all the side. Um, weapons can be anything from shields to spears to swords to daggers to arrows to everything else. Um, there are also characters that dance a lot and that's good and you can, you can enjoy that and you can, you can perform your own style while you are in that specific character and you can let yourself be taken away by the flow of the character a bit and so on and so forth. Now, cosplay community in, in Romania, I saw that they are focusing more on crafting and less on, on, on acting. And that's my personal opinion here. You, you can agree with me or not, but it's not that hard to, to make a rehearsal, document your own role and start entering and exiting the designated character bit by bit. You can start systematically five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, maybe perhaps an hour, maybe perhaps one or two hours a week, but it's still something. The more you progress, the more into it you, you, you become. And I say you become because you're not supposed to fake it until you make it. I believe it's about doing it until you becoming it, until you become it, sorry. Because you will take a specific program, you'll take a specific uh, mentality and, and attitude and install it within your own. And maybe perhaps you will discover that you are so much more. People, again, focusing on, on, on what they think and on their feedback, can be good and bad at the same time if you're going to extremes. If you're taking what's what's necessary, what's good critique, what you can improvise and get better at, that's okay. If you take every single detail that people cast out of you, voices inside your head will grow bigger. And if you're not gonna let them out in a controlled space, again, with specialists, let's say, then it will, Humble down your persona and attitude and character. You wouldn't want that. You want to enter a role in the designated day you're going to a specific convention. 
or uh, in 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 a competition or just before filming a video or anything else of of the sort my first step again after answering all the why questions would be to first deep breed feel your own breathing realize that you are alive and here in this reality in this dimension and you have just brung out another character here you can pinpoint the similarities in their attitude and behavior and really work on that and add a little bit of a personal touch and you can see if there are similarities in between the thoughts of the character and your thoughts emotions and reactions and your emotions and, and reactions and of course what's instantly seen physical shape image that that you just show because if, if you're gonna stay just just like a statue let's say maybe perhaps you're gonna look the part and maybe perhaps you don't maybe perhaps you're out and in shape depends on what you you focus on but if you have the behavior and attitude you're golden you're you're at least two two parts there two parts out of out of three let's say now after you have done this this exercise of, of breathing we can remember again that in the co cosplay context uh, there are not many um voice acting happening so more or less you're gonna use that that voice you can you can alter your voice depending on the character for let's say example Geralt of Rivia talks you uh, know in, in a low um neck voice just like you know mimicking the wolves maybe perhaps some anime character speaks in a higher pitch tone maybe perhaps somebody else has opera just like the fifth element right and you're going to want to to improvise an exercise on that but in case you're not going to do that and not going to go there at least start with the poses and integrate them in your walk during your walk to the grocery store back to your house or between the people and see if you can integrate the way you're walking through the character specific poses do they have any logic where don't they have any uh, logic where's the obstacle where does your joint seem to be blocked and all that and you're going to become aware not self-conscious to yourself but aware about your surroundings about your left and right steps just like in any dance about your breathing and focus back on on your thoughts and emotions and it's a conscious process the more you do it the more you build up reflex the moment you're going to rehearse your character without any costume which i totally uh, recommend doing it more before entering a specific costume a specific uh, role because you perhaps you're going to have big big armor sheets on your and your movement will be restricted before you enter a specific role you can play it and i will recommend you to play it around perhaps your house even if you're naked or wearing comfortable clothes because anybody that that can see your pose and and uh, your 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 posture and your movement could identify it to that including the face the eyes the the eyebrows the breathing the the smiles or the cries or anything else or the, or the rage or the you know every single feeling that you will want to express and perhaps a bit exaggerate at the beginning you have more the moment you put a costume on and it doesn't fit you you're going to focus on that you're going to focus on, on those details oh my god it just ripped oh it uh, i stretched too much oh i, I just I, I i made of a specific uh, step and i and i and i stumbled and all that or perhaps you you were on stage or or showing off with with a specific props and it broke quit around and you and you missed or anything of the such and it will get you out of character a bit but in that moment you can deep breathe for five and six seconds and ask yourself okay this just happened what would my character do it broke i stumbled some people laugh that guy screamed and all that and if you know your character and if you know yourself again the answer will come 
way, way much simpler because you will react as your uh, your beloved character and everything will seem to be flowing and your atmosphere will grow. Your reality combined with the character's reality will intertwine and things will be perhaps even better and you're going to leave a better impression. Maybe even on yourself, you're going to be going back home and you're going to be like, wow, I had that reflex of, of telling the, the guy or telling the girl this type of, uh, of answer. For example, you can be in a Joker character. You can be Machiavellic, you can be evil, you can have a evil laughter, you can smile a lot, and you can you can see the pain of, of smiling a lot uh, and forcefully, and you can react towards people like Joker would, would, would do, with funny jokes, with less funny jokes, with evil jokes, and stuff like that. Even if he stumbles, he's going to go for that. Oh, I just stumbled, oh, I just, you know, covered my pants with, with mud and everything else, but you know, I'm going to enjoy that because, you know, Batman, because he's Joker and he's going to, to fight Batman and he's not going to focus on the, on the actual uh, happening over there. So always have the big goal in mind. Why you're doing this? Why do you want to, to um, enter the role? And uh, now I can, I can pinpoint a bit about exiting the role. And then we can switch over to our uh, fellow friends that I would want to, to ask a few questions about this and of, of their perspective, of course. Um, exiting a role. If you stay too much in that specific role, even if you like it, you're going to feel a bit of an, of an inertia, like, like a numbness. It's best to stay one, maybe perhaps two hours out of that area, out of that scene, out of that um, costume, just to get back to who you are and where you're living and <laughs> what are your thoughts and acknowledge your feelings and what you've been gone through. Sometimes you will be able to be a, an observer and leave your character take over. Sometimes the character won't come out because you still have to tweak every single nook and cranny about, about, your, about your aspect. And sometimes you can just go with the flow because people are helping you out because acting is reacting. And the moment they answer to your question or joke or or line or or gesture you're gonna feel a connection coming back and you're gonna work on that you're gonna take that story and develop it it's make it plausible make it plausible in the atmosphere and reality of your character which again i believe you have documented and and learned now exiting sometimes can take five minutes if you have a shock if you have if you, if you have a scare if you instantly remember that your mom called and you know your actual role when your mom called you you're the son or you're the daughter right and i'm going to quote here um what uh, Livio Lukacs from the university of uh, bucharest has told the people in a specific podcast that people that don't understand their role in everything they they do perhaps in life is going to be way way harder to get by and work and achieve a specific uh, a, a specific result. Now, the moment your mom calls, you instantly know you're the son, you're the daughter. The moment the neighbor calls, you instantly know you're the neighbor. The moment the, the, the teacher calls, you know you're the student. The moment the boss calls, you know you're the employee. And this is how the reflex is being created. Now, if you're on stage and if you're in that character, constantly asking yourself out of reflex, who am I, who am I? I am this guy playing, portraying this character, but I am this character right now. You're going to act and react and answer with that character. The moment you want to exit, the process is vice versa, is going backwards. Okay, I've been playing this character. I've been having this much fun and now I'm going back. Now I need to eat. Now I need to sleep. Now I need to uncover myself and now I need to let it sleep. I need to take over again my thoughts, my feelings, my whys and questions and, and directions and my priorities. Sometimes, again, this process can take five minutes. Maybe perhaps you're taking a shower and it's going to be nice for you. Um, sometimes it can be the blistering cold. You're, you're sitting while waiting for the bus to come and pick you up. Um, sometimes you're going in a fan fantasy role 
you know, dragons, swords and everything. And perhaps the moment you're going to see the cab, taxi, you're going to be instantly thrown out. Sometimes you have played that character for 10, 15 hours. It's that it has taken a toll. And now you feel burdened by it. And it's, the, the inertia is going to be much, much bigger to go out, especially in body language, especially if you have rehearsed your movement, your walk, your talk, your posture, and even the hand gestures. That would be raw, um, basically the, the raw um, lines that, that we can we can we can discuss. Um, I'm going to invite here a good good friend, um, which is Max Amza Marius, and I hope he is and will be still uh, still with us still online. Um, because I want to ask him specifically what it did, what it meant to him. I hope he's going to be back online. And I'm going to also call uh, a, a friend from, from Bucharest, which, like I said, has uh, the acting skills and has the basic steps in his perspective on entering and uh, exiting a role. And we can take all types of, uh, of, of questions if you have any or if you're interested in something and i might have missed so right now um i know i've, I've talked a lot and i know i've been going in and out of of of, of this um just to make a short uh, short conclusion when entering a specific role besides the question of why you're doing it besides you're going to leave behind as a message, which I believe those are the very basic steps to, to begin with. Over crafting your uh, your costume, I'm going to focus on your breathing, emotions, and thoughts, and trying to slowly, first by copying, second by doing, and of course by listening to to the source of of the material, entering a role. Now. Depending on how much you're going to stay in that role and the, the more you're going to react to that role, it, it's going to come back the moment you're going to, um, to, to remember who you are, where you are, what are your priorities, thoughts, and emotions. And the process is backwards a bit. I have a bit of a question. Yes, I, yes please. I was wondering, you were talking about going in and out of character. Was there any sort of funny story where you accidentally reacted while still in character to a situation that didn't need it to be like that? Like, did you have any hiccups oh, like man. that? Yes. Many, 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 many times. So, for example, I, I've been doing a lot of uh, medieval festivals going uh, around the country and trying to focus on, on characters which are based on actual historical events. And um, from that point, Instead of saying hi normally to the people or just shaking shake, shake their hands and hey, how are you? I, you know, nice to see you and stuff. I was still reacting as if I was like a, a specific nobleman on a horse. So I was like, hey, noble friend, and how are you doing? And my tone of voice was shouting and, You're you know, <laughs> combining and everything. Very theatrical and very, very romantical in in a specific way. I mean, sometimes we would go and have a bit of a choreograph fight, which are, are again, just a bit of like, like, like dancing, but well, much more violent in, in, in one specific way. And we, we got hurt. And, and sometimes we reacted as if we got hurt and we reacted as if somebody cut my belly and I was still walking around people having no actual pain, but I was still holding my breath. And I was like, oh my God, no. Here's our friend. Let's see. Hello, my friend. Can you can you enter us? Yes. I see. I see. I'm going to I'm going to come back to you in one moment. So, um, thing is like this: we have a friend here, uh, Vlad Stefan. He's trying to enter uh, our primary Discord channel. And I will need Marius or anyone that has administrating rights on that to see if there are any incoming, um, to say this, in incoming approvals uh, be checked. 
No, it's he automatic. Has the link. It's automatic. It's automatic. Okay. So. But anyway, uh, I think we're running a bit late, so maybe he can join us uh, in the text chat if he'd like to say anything. I see. Um, I'm going to to see if he can still enter, and if he has technical difficulties, no worries on that. And I'm going to um, I'm going to go back to Christy, which will help us right now with 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 a bit of an example video. What you're going to see here in uh, in, in the video is like this: we we work with uh, with Max on a specific Star Wars role. Now we rehearsed a lot, entering designated roles of Ram Kota and Star Killer killer clone from star wars the, the force unleashed we were still acting like that to answer nico's questions further um frowning a lot raging a lot and reacting suddenly a lot as if you know the sit force was still flowing through us we tried here especially copying what you're gonna see and well unfortunately I couldn't have the time to, to edit the videos properly, but you're gonna have a bit of an example in which we managed to enter our characters, I would say, pretty much very well. And, uh, you know, at, at least in a decent way, at least in a, in a decent way. So I'm gonna ask Christy to, to give you this short of an example. And side by side, you can see the comparison in between the gestures of the characters from the original game and our actual, um, our actual, uh, say scene um our, the proper scene will start around the uh, second 43 but we're gonna see it so christy please let's play and i am going to as much as possible get off the stage entirely for our next entry If you saw them yesterday, you know why. If you didn't, you'll still know why in just a few more minutes. Okay. It doesn't matter you can't see me. I'm safe. Please welcome to the stage a group entry, Redeemers. Jedi General Ram Kota from Star Wars The Force Unleashed, and Garrett Malik, the Star Killer clone from Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I'll be over here. General Cody. General Cody. I, I pay for this place. Wherever you are, get lost. I was beginning to worry that you died in your sleep. Oh, well, that's one the wish that I had. I've tracked you across the galaxy from Nar Shaddaa to Ziast. And who are you? Bounty hunter. Not exactly, but I think we can help each other out, Jedi. I'm uh, no Jedi now. Hmm? Not since this. I don't need your eyes, just your mind and everything you know about fighting the Empire. Well, nobody fights the Empire wins, boy. You better hope you're wrong about that, General. There he is. Over there. Stop right there. Do you know we're going to need to pick up outside the vapor room right now? Out of my way. Are you giving up already? It's a fool, Aaron boy. The Emperor's army is infinite. You'll eventually be killed. Worse, nothing will have changed. But wouldn't you rather die on your feet than drown in some cantina? I don't know. But I do have a contact in the city who could use your lightsaber. 
Where's your ship? So that was the one. Yep. That was the one. Um, as you saw, we we and we focused. Tom Cota and Garen Malik, the Star Killer clone from Star. Yep. Uh, we we did focus a lot on uh, on the specific gestures, the way he, they were staying on the on the table, the gesture with the eyes because he had the eyes cut out. Um, the specific uh, body language and face of Garrett Malek, the moment he entered, and well, we additionally entered with a bit more of a, a bit more of a, of a, of our own personal taste, you know, inserting a joke here, um, exaggerating the gestures on on stage for the people in the background to see, and well, eventually we 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 managed to pull it off. And by the way, it was Max's second time on stage. And I want to give him a big, big shout out because, well, he didn't enter around, but a big, big shout out because he performed very well, very nicely. And to me, that was that was that, that was great. I was I was impressed, and you probably saw that that me on stage, I was I was smiling, and I was I was enjoying what I was seeing. I mean, he, that thing got me out of character because I was like, hey, this is actually enjoyable. This is actually nice. I mean, I can I can do this over and over again and not get bored, you know, and not not get uh, cringy. Um, we have uh, Stefan Vlad with us right now, and I want to say hi, and you know, welcome. And well, even if we have a bit of a time left, and because of the of the schedule, um, you know, going a bit more tense, I want to ask Vlad if he can specifically go to the basics of very primordial steps of entering and exiting a role, um, the way he sees it, and about the important questions about the whys I was telling you about, why you're doing this and how you're doing this. Vlad, please take over. If you can hear us and if you have uh, any, any microphone open, by any chance. Let's see if we have any technical difficulties. I think so, we can't hear him. Let's see. Um, by any chance, Marius, Christy, how how much time do you think we we still have? We still we we can still uh, stay for a couple of minutes or so, or it, everything needs needs to change. Let me just. Well, yeah, I'll Christy is the maybe. next. Uh, hmm? Is the next host, so uh, so you can go ahead. Yeah, sorry. It's uh, I think it's uh, the program. the The following program is on Zoom, so until three o'clock, I believe, if the program is correct, um, the channel is free of any uh, panels. So uh, you can sure stay on and and finish the the panel and the uh, uh, presentation for the next hour. Um, I, I'm going to try to converse a bit with uh, with Vlad to see if he still has uh, any 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 sound. I I guess he tries to enter and exit. Um, but if you guys have any questions right now, anything that I could answer and maybe perhaps I missed, or any any curiosity which I haven't answered yet. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask uh, in your experience, what was the most difficult character to cosplay? Right. So I had, um, I'm, and I'm going to show you a bit of a, of a screen share. Um, I had a, a character from Elder Scrolls Online. Um, it was supposed to be, a, let's say, a Nightblade or Breton Nightblade in any, any way, but it was one of the uh, characters from the main cinematic. And the main factor of that guy is that he didn't say a word. And that kind of killed me because I, I couldn't get to do the guy. I, I couldn't get in the in the character's skin. So I mean, 
at least not fully. I'm going to share my screen right now. I, I hope you guys can see this. Let me let me know if it's uh, if it's viewable right now. So in case it it loaded, and if you're watching the the stream, this is the character over here. A bit of a you know poker face in, into that, and which has you know a lot of costume, a lot of a lot of props on him. I mean, he's a combination between a swordsman and an archer, medium to light armor. He's supposed to be versatile, flexible. He's supposed to fight a lot, and he, also he's supposed to be like a like a rogue, and you know. This can uh, this can happen. Now the fact, the main factor is that he had this this weird poker face and more of his uh, specific gestures and and faces faces he that that he, that he was uh, using weren't there. Um, I had to take it from the cinematic. Um, imagine staying for four three days. So or yeah four. Three days. I would have said three days because maybe perhaps in between the in 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 between the nights. Always always focusing on on what I I saw little by little in every single frame. This little frown over here, the way he shoots the arrows, the way he um, assaults people, the way he goes and um, you know puts his little um hood on and his little uh scarf um the moment he he starts to fight why does he st stumble a lot and how does he stumble a lot and what are his reactions and i was trying to get a sense of is he if, if he is being in cynical or not helping or not the good guy or the bad guy and trust me it, it was such a gray area that when we went when we went uh, back on um, on stage, we didn't even knew. Uh, are we supposed to just give the people a fight scene? Are we supposed to give them an interaction? Maybe perhaps make it comical in a way, but how to make it comical? And um, yeah, um, in one specific point, this character arc, he is taken by magic. He becomes undead. And then he comes back to life as a normal hero. Not knowing anything from his background, where he comes from, how does he react in multiple situations, why does he rush in towards the fight as if he wants to take over the world or something, gives you a very, very gray area to, to walk on. So more or less, he kind of winged it, so to say. So yeah, that was that was hard. Put the costume on, everything was heavy, everything was a lot of pieces, and your movements are restricted. Flexibility part, the reaching out and running and stumbling and fumbling and getting back on and posing and everything, five times harder. Five times harder. Um, let, let's see, do we have uh, Stefan Vlad with us? I mean, yes, yes, I'm here. Hello. Yes, thank you. Oh, one, well, wonderful. Um, Sorry, I, I, I my phone and my phone was ringing. Hello, everyone. Vlad is taking care of the casting for a specific movie here in Brasov these days, these weeks, and uh, he's doing an immense job and keeping, uh, you know, everything uh, settled and everything in control. So let let's give him that. Um, getting back to the question in hand. Um, but what would you say is the best way to enter and exit a role? Taking uh, care of, of the primordial questions of the why. So I'm going to give it to you. Okay, the, the main question is why. Why we are there, why we are here, why we want to do uh, that kind of action. That is the main question. But the most important questions are behind in these whys. And... Uh, for me, the the best the best questions uh, it could be first of all, who wants what from who? You must think you your character. Who is it? What it wants from who? The main thing in drama is 
it's not so complicated the drama, the storyline, the storytelling. The main thing is that somebody wants something and it's hard to get it. This is a story. If somebody wants to get something and it's easy, I just now want to take up snack and I will get it. This is not a story. So it, um, more or less, it, it creates a bit of a conflict. It, it creates a bit of duality in a way, in 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 the context. Yes, this is a uh, yes. But yes, the 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 question that who wants what from who? This must be a problem a, a problem solving for every character in what you're doing in your acting. Yes. Mm -hmm. After this, after this, another question is why now why now i want to take a snack you know why because i'm hungry and this will help me very uh, very much in my acting because i'm hungry i want now to take a snack and and then the third question is what happens if i will not take that snack i'll die starving I will go to a store to take another snack. What happens? And look, these three questions make a story. Not even the character, what character you're building or what, what you want to do with your character. The whole story is making. And this, I think, that's the most three important questions and only that. Um, no. Why I say only this? Because uh, in America, in America, everything in cinema, in theater, in everything, they keep it simple. This is this this is a very important thing. Keep it simple and keep it simple. Don't try to rush. Don't try to uh, to uh, to see how you do things uh, in acting. Acting is very simple. Acting is from the word act. You just need to do it. Just act. This is acting. Don't think how you do it. Just do it. Think of uh, why you do it. And then those three questions. The three whys. This is how it calls the three whys. Who wants what from who? Why now? And what happens if not? And this eventually is all. this will pile up. I mean, inherently, they will pile up brick by brick and change or alter the story and the universe of that character, right? Yes, yes, yes. Keep it simple. These are the three whys and uh, just act. If you act, you are an actor. This is simple and uh, beautiful. It's very hard and that's why it's beautiful. You need a lot of exercises in everything what you do, a lot of training and a lot of passion. But these things are the most beautiful things for the mind, for the soul, for the whole relationship relationships and especially for the relationship between you and you not you and your character yeah you and you me Stefan Vlad is the best thing for me if I do acting yeah because I know I will know who I am eventually this is what acting means acting means who are um, us in this planet it's about mm -hmm. what we know about us and what we know about us help us to know about the other people around us we'll also have three questions here three small questions one for you vlad do you ever play a character and while playing it the the thought ran through your head that wait a second i am not an actor what am i doing what is this Yes, it happened. Yes. And how did you how did you overcome that? Yes, it was a technique from that. Uh, I was on stage then. Yeah. And I was it was my first uh, main role in. Um, from Mikhail Sebastian, Jocul de Vacanza. Okay. This was the okay. play. This was the play. And uh, I have I have the fight with my girlfriend. This was the scene. And. I, I, I was 
making a very, very big mistake then, I was thinking about my lines. What I say, what I say, what I do, what I say, what I do. This is very bad. <laughs> this is very bad. Don't do that. And I have the blackout. I just tapped. And I, and I watched the public, uh, the audience, and I saw them. And I saw a lot of eyes that realized that it's not part of the play. It's a mistake. And I was, uh, I have uh, black in my front. I, I was very, very red on my face. I, I didn't know what to do. The reactions, and, yeah. Yeah. And I just freezed. But it was a very nice thing. It was a technique from the director there that said, everything, if it's happening wrong, now just call, we have the waitress there in our scenario, in our scenes in that play, we have the waitress and we, and we just need to call her to bring us water, to integrate this in our right. play. If somebody have a mistake, and I screamed, Violeta! And I screamed again, Violeta! Things get better. Right. People laughed. People laughed. Things get better. Violeta, <laughs> the girl who played Violeta, didn't realize. She forgot <laughs> that this was a plan B. If someone make a mistake, we need to make plan Bs. But we need to have 100% for our plan A. The plan B in the whole professional save, yeah. world, in the whole big professional big production if it's broadway if it's cinema if it's the the biggest production from cosplay everything the plan b is the plan a again in the, See, in, so the in the beginning your your, was, your safety net but safety net translated in that specific universe that specific character yes 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 uh, well, what I'm saying, we don't, uh, in the beginning, when we start, when we start uh, this job, this kind of lifestyle, it's a lifestyle, not a job for me. When we start in this, okay, we have plan Bs until we get experience, until we learn much more, until we experience much, much more, until we discover much more about this. But then after this, the plan B must be the plan A again. Mm -hmm. I will also go back to to my second question, and because we have we have Max with us, you just saw Max uh, with the role of Ram Koda back from from Star Wars: The Force Unleashed, a, a little little play over there, and I wanted to ask him if he he can hear us and if he is able to answer the specific question. Um, what did um, what did that role meant to him, and what did he like doing while he was Ram Kota? Excuse me, I was coming to ask you earlier, and I didn't say anything in English. But I didn't say anything in English. I was În primul rând, da, sunt fan Star Wars, uh, am jucat uh, mai toate jocurile Star Wars, m-a atras foarte mult uh, generalul Ram Cota. Uh, ce să zic, uh, copilul din mine s-a bucurat foarte mult pentru acel duel cu Starkiller, ca să o spun uh, așa, cât mai direct și fără să spun că vai personajul și uh, postura lui și ce face și ce... M-a atras cel mai mult duelul. Zic, domnule, zic, e o luptă, trebuie să fie frumos. Și nu a fost prima oară pe scenă. Pentru mine totul a fost wow. Da, nu no, știu ce uh, să spui. Uh, Max, uh, Max had, um, I'm, I'm going to just pinpoint this out. We were uh, in, in, in France with, with my brother and my brother was uh, just making fun of every, every, everything over there because that's how he is. And the moment he went to Max and told him that, hey, there are 15,000 people watching you guys because there's the stage and look at how many people there are. 
I could I could see Max going all yellow and starting to feel nauseous. And I was like, no, don't don't do this to me. No. So yeah, that can actually happen. The the mere realization that in that specific point, everybody is watching you. So you, you're not entering and exiting a role however you want, and you're playing around however you want. There's the real risk of getting more emotions, more judgments, more opinions thrown at you, and how you're going to deal with that. And for that, um, my on my third and final question, I'm going to to switch over to Nico because I know that Nico went to the her first uh, medieval festival back in in Sigishwara and played like a, a maid bard role in a, in a way, started singing and interacting with people and making jokes with them, and well. People inside Transylvania helped a lot. I mean, acting is reacting, like I said, and it, it gave her immense energy. And she mm -hmm. gathered everything around and started going wild. I mean, at, at one point, we were just stepping back and we were watching her, and it was a live show. So um, how, did you, how did you manage to connect with people mm -hmm. to get the energy back to your character? For well... you, at least. Hi guys, first of all, hi. <laughs> uh, I am, I, I want to start everything, I want to say stuff first because I am, I don't consider myself a cosplayer because I see how, especially by comparison, because I see how much passion everybody else is putting into this. And I'm like a, a wee little lassie trying to <laughs> dip my fingers into this ocean. And um, I'm not a cosplayer, I'm not an actress. I... I don't know. I just, I guess I generally just, I'm, I'm just a creative person. I just like to come up with characters and act up, up upon them. Uh, in Sigishwara, the medieval festival, I don't know what happened. I literally just don't know. I just had a bunch of like somewhat medieval clothes with a, some, a bit of a twist on them. I had like a little vest. Um, I had the leather boots. I had a hat with like feathers on it. I had this bag, this traditional, like, um, very folk-style bag that I just carried with me. And, I don't know, just something happened when I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, okay, this is a character. I cannot act like myself because it's not gonna make sense. So I just kind of went at it and I played this little happy bard, like, um dandelion sort of role from witcher 3 <laughs> and uh just being overly cheerful talking in rhymes um uh, i kind of joke about it right now and saying that i just dissociated for like three days because it's I'm, a, I'm usually a bit of a shy person i don't really meddle with like other people's business but in my head just that connection happened that i am now a different person and i'm gonna act like a different person i'm in a medieval a uh, fortress, everybody's dressed like in, peri in that time period clothes, and I am now a different person. I am gonna act like a different person. It just came very weirdly natural. <laughs> and I think like the catalyst of it was that I just had fun. People were looking at me and they were admiring me and other, and other actors and other like attendees. And it just fit. I don't know how to explain it. I literally don't know. But it was, I think it was my first acting experience ever. And it was a tremendous, it was, I, I don't want to pat myself too hard on the shoulder, but I think it was a tremendous success. I saw people having fun. I saw children smiling and laughing. I like children a lot. So I'm, I'm actually a teacher <laughs> in my day job. So I work with kids. Uh, people were like having People are having fun, my fellow my fellow actors, like Alex over here, <laughs> we were having fun together. It was, it was a really nice experience, I just... And when we left there, I just returned to my normal life. It was like, okay, now I'm Nico again. <laughs> so... That's, um, would you have liked to, to stay more in that, in that character? And I don't know if... This is a question for you all. I mean, if you had any character, you you wanted to enter how much did you want it to stay inside that mm -hmm. character well if, if any if if anything 
Well, I, I'm going to talk to my about myself or myself right now and say that because I'm at the start of it. I'm, I'm not a cosplayer. I'm not an actress. I'm just trying to dip my fingers into it, into this ocean, like I said. I feel like for me, three days was enough. <laughs> it was just the right amount of time. And it was sure. because it wasn't continuous. When I got tired, I went back to my room. I was chilling. I was returning back into my mindset. And then... And it was okay. It was a balanced thing. I don't think I could have, I could have kept it up for like a week. It would probably been very, very tiring. So like three days, like eight hours a day, it was perfectly perfect. <laughs> Max, and... for example. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just watched in. I, I was so eager. I was. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, continue. No, no, it's okay. I was just saying, and I don't really have any other characters I would like to play right now. I'm just, I'm still exploring. I guess. That's all. Thanks for thanks for asking me. By the way, that was really nice. Of course, I mean, thank you for sharing. That's that's a that's a different perspective, and we all need refreshing uh, refreshing thoughts. Um, Max, if you if you can remember, a fost dor de tine însuț cât timp era în personaj, cât de repede. Știi, adică, ai fi jucat. Toată ziua, ai fi stat mai mult în universul Star Wars sau ai fi zis, bă, vreau să fiu înapoi, Max. Bine mi-a ajuns acolo, câte un pic. Cred că e posibil, adică, la fel și cu Dwarf-ul din Lord of the Rings, da. Da, da, categoric. Cred că m-aș limita la trei zile, e ok. Exact cam că durează și convențiile de cosplay. Ai un vineri, sâmbătă, duminică. Dar, da, m-aș limita la trei zile. Nu știu dacă aș putea mai mult. La un moment dat, într-adevăr, mi s-ar face dor de max. Asta este. Eu, um, personal, I mean, yeah, well, me, personally, if, if I want to, to, to stay in one specific character, and uh, trust me, I saw people doing live actual roleplay, uh, roleplaying for... 10 to 15 hours and they were switching four characters and that was a lot they, they didn't want to go back to being themselves so in behind every single choice you do in behind every single uh, role you uptake um, they are the wise and they're literally tied back to your own roots it's not mere curiosity because it's something way different than you want to explore there is something And that something will determine why and your interaction and the way you're entering your designated uh, your designated character. And it can be personal. It can be a lot of background. Uh, it can be your salvation. It can be your help. It can be your alter ego. It can be it can be your friend when nobody's there. And it it can it can make the the world much more fun. The kids smiling. The Even the grass growing, if if you know what I mean. I mean, even even the animals feel your character. The more real it gets. If you want to pet a dog or a cat while you're being in character, or perhaps you're seeing a cat and you're you're a big cat lover, like like I am, and with with the dogs. And the moment I see something like that, it instantly throws me out of my character. I'm I'm like I'm going there. I'm gonna pet it. I'm gonna kiss it. I'm gonna I'm gonna hug it. So yeah, that can happen and being aware of the background being aware of the question why being aware of the destination and all the implication in between your character and the world outside and the world it creates um, brings you brings you in a more deeper sense as as being perhaps human a bit more than human and then you know broad Straight broadens up your your horizon, in in my opinion, because we all want to live intensive and nice and real life and integrate everything back to our own center. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope we we covered uh, I hope we covered at least surface the beginning part of 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 entering and exiting a role. Short 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 recap. Um, You've you have uh, answered your whys. You have established your character. You have documented your character. You're starting rehearsing without costume. You start rehearsing 
with costume, you're trying to copy and integrate and behave like that character, you're starting to think of the implications on why this and why that. You're starting to think about the implications with the other characters in the story, if any, and you're starting to think and act on what you have with what you have going further and further bit by bit. It's a construction, it's a big universe. And you are the vessel throwing out the image for someone else and exiting the process is reversed. You have to remember who you are, where you're going, what's your destination, what's feelings, and of course, remember to breathe a lot. Trust me, it, it helps. It helps. If anything, if, if you have any other questions or additions, please let us know. Um, Stefan, Nico, Marius, Max. Ari, I see I Daniel, small, I see Christy, yeah. I do have a small question. Uh, since you've talked about that character from a trailer for uh, The Elder Scrolls of Online, the, uh, I believe it was a Breton knight or of some sort. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, uh, how exactly do you decide which character you're going to cosplay? I mean, do you look at the general aesthetic associated with them and do, I mean you take that into consideration or do you also look at the lore I mean how can you fit in with the character that that was the so, question. This is a very good uh, aspect I I really thought about this um at the very first beginning I made myself a list of the characters I want to portray while doing the list I found out about myself that I don't have uh, one on, on the very peak that can, you know, integrate everything I ever wanted. But there was always some flaw or something missing from a specific character. And then I started juggling around multiple characters in which I liked. I, I started putting on, on the piece of paper who I am and what I want to do and what I want to integrate, perhaps what I don't have currently. And um, I started seeing that in specific characters. A list of six to ten characters emerged and the Breton Nightblade was on my very first point of I want someone to combinate uh, swordplay with archery and being a bit stealthy roguish but also being aggressive when he needs to and also I liked the the blue and yellow colors but I was going more in depth of the character and um, less on the on the on the aesthetic um, Many people go on the aesthetic. They don't know anything about the character. They only know it's cool. And they only know, oh, it's there and the media throws it out because it's influential. They don't have the background and the connection being made. That's why perhaps we see many, many Batman and Superman, many Harley Quinns, many um, League of Legends, many anime characters specifically, and which is good. It's nice. It's it's okay. I mean, from a from a passionate uh, perspective, you can do whatever you wish, however you wish it. You can even crisscross everything. And um, if you're going on a more depth in depth level, more and more and more professional for your own self, or perhaps you respect the art itself, you're going to to dip more than your fingers and 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 your toes in the water. And that's why. Asking yourself why you're doing this and how you're doing this helps you swim around because perhaps one one thing can go nasty and you want to go back to the to the very shore. So yeah, the weapons, movement and behavior, and the colors. That's what actually that's what actually attracted me to to that Elder Scrolls. I mean. The way it was portrayed, it was freaking badass. I, I, up to this date, I still don't know who was the motion capture actor that did the, the cinematics. But if he hears me, well done. You have, you have inspired me a lot. I'm hands down. It's like Andy Serkis with, uh, with, with Gollum, or uh, you know, Cumberbatch with, uh, with the dragon from, from Smog, from Hobbit. Thank you so much. If anyone else would like to add anything.
I think it was a really great panel. Um, I got a bit late. I kind of, <clears throat> I kind of missed the first part of it, but I managed to catch up on, on the road, and it was really nice. It was a really nice presentation, Alex. I think you did a great job. So, congrats. <laughs> it was really awesome. I thank you very much for for your encouragement. I I hope I did. I I felt like saying so much more, but <laughs> you know. There is, there always is so much more to say about this topic. There's always branches out again and again and again. You can spend the whole day here, <laughs> perhaps. And um, what we want to, to point out, even if we are far, 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 far away from one, one to each other, I just want to point out, first of all, big, big, big thanks for, for tuning in. Second of all, I guess we are the type of people that um, can and will be able to help and give out a hand to all that are interested in this. So for more discussions, for more questions, for anything that you like, um, we have several cosplay play pages. You can find us on Facebook and on, on Instagram. Heck, you can even call us in the midnight and perhaps we will answer. Why not? Because we're going to be like in, in the character that answers your phone in the middle of the night. So, uh, so yeah. Feel free to post uh, the links in the program chat. Sure. The I'm... Facebook page and try everything else. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you guys as well. Um, if you're going to ask my character right now, if you're going to ask Garrett about entering and exiting a role, and you're going to see that <laughs> putting the hood on specifically, it's not so dystopian and also, but Whenever you're going to ask him, remember that he's going to tell you this. Everything that has been lost can be found. Anything that can, has been blocked can be reopened. Anything that is yours can and will be mine. I wish to thank you all and um, well, I will step out of the character because I have immensely, immensely stolen your time. Uh, that's, that's no problem. No problem at all. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. She's about opening the register record. <laughs>